These days I'm kind of aware that I'm closer to the end than I am the beginning. Particularly after everything we've been through, coronavirus and everything like that, I've had the opportunity, you know, in the quiet periods to kind of sit back and think, hey, you know what, you know, just to ride a bike for a living, you know, to have the privilege to stick on a Team GB jersey for the fourth time is, uh, it's not too bad. You know, every Olympic athlete's had a few ups and downs on the way and, you know, we, we, we're so used to, you know, as soon as we finish one race, we're looking ahead and we're planning the next one and we're sticking in our training diaries of sessions and competitions on the way up to the big one and it's, I mean, I've never experienced anything like it. I've been doing this a long time for, you know, an event as big as the Olympics to be postponed 12 months. It certainly threw a bit of a curveball in everybody's life, but, you know, it's just great that it's all happening eventually, and I'm just happy it's going ahead. And the crowd are loving it. They're watching the clock. 3.53-3.14. The British quartet of Ed Clancy, Paul Manny, Geraint Thomas and Bradley Wiggins are the Olympic champions. I was there as a 23-year-old lad riding with you know, Bradley Wiggins and you know, he was kind of my hero as a kid growing up, or at least one of them. And then Geraint Thomas, my best mate, and we had Paul Manning, who was like my big brother type figure. And we had a great team and you know, to go there and deliver it in your first Olympics and you know, that was really the start of the kind of boom of British cycling. Yeah, it was a great experience, yeah. One lap to go, here they come. Half a lap to go for the British team. The world record is 3.52.499. The gold medal is Great Britain's. Here they come up to the line. Oh, look at the time. 3.51.659. It's a new world record. And Great Britain have won the gold medal. You know, we had a whole stadium and a whole country of people, uh, you know, kind of watching us and expecting us to win. Um, but that said, you know, when we delivered the goods, you know, in front of that home crowd and... Ed Clancy! As a cyclist, you, you get very few opportunities, you know, in your career to kind of touch such a, a wide audience, you know. It was almost like football level stuff, you know, even if it was just for a week and, you know, it was a great experience. Who's got that little bit extra in the legs? Who can find the difference? Making move to take them over the line in first place. Will it be Britain? Will it be Australia? We'd had a tough time, you know, between London and Rio. There was no doubt about that. Particularly the last 18 months, I had my back operation. I remember crawling down the stairs here, you know, when I got back from the operation and, you know, my training diary literally had like uh, a 15 minute walk. That's where we started. There was a post box down the road and that's where it started. That's where this comeback started. And to go from such a kind of low place and, yeah, I was worried about my career, my job, everything was kind of on the line at that point. And then, you know, to eight months later, we got it right, but only just. But that, that was, I've never felt winning like that before. You know, it was, that was the best out of the lot. Can you add a fourth? You know, this coronavirus hasn't been a great thing, but it's given us a wonderful place to have just kind of focus on the basics of training and resting. Uh, you know, so physically, we're going to be in a great place and we're going to be better than we ever were. I've got no doubt about that, because I know if we do pull it off, this will be the best one yet.